Hi guys and welcome to 2023. Oh my God, I wonder what's going to happen this year in the wonderful world of film photography, eh? I wonder if we're going to see any more price hikes in film and paper and chemicals or maybe it might come down in price. And also let's keep our ears to the ground and see what Pentax are up to. They're meant to be bringing out a new film camera. Um, I don't know how that's going to go, but um, <laughs> Viva La Film, let's get on with it. I went out today with this little beauty. This is a Kodak Retinet from the 1950s. It's a Retinet 022, and it's a 35mm camera. There's no frills, no spills with it. It's just a basic camera. There's no light meter inside. There's no uh, through the lens focusing. There's no range finder. You've got to do everything yourself, but they're great fun to use, and I love shooting these, but oh my God, this one today... It messed up on me. I can't believe it, the first video of 2023, I thought I'd go out and shoot some of this old retinette and see what I'd get. Not only did the camera mug me off, I also got mugged off by a couple of little 10 year olds, cheeky little buggers. Now this is an old train station, Victorian train station, uh, Shanklin train station. Proper old. No, this is Sandown train station, mate. Where's it? Uh, is it Sandown? Yeah. Well, it's the Sandown station. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Shanklin station. I called them a couple of lads that told me this was Sandown station, but it's not. It's Shanklin, the little shits. But I've had this camera for some time, and it's always worked well for me, apart from today. So what the hell has gone wrong? Um, first of all, I'll give you a quick overview of this camera. It's a 1950s Kodak Retinet made in Germany. It's a bit of a strange camera because at the bottom you've got your film advance. It's quite um, strange to get used to, you know, when things are sort of the other way around. You're normally used to having it this way around. Um, but it's at the bottom there, which is a bit strange. But um, other than that, you soon get used to it. And there we go again. Here you go, nothing. Nothing at all. Ah, it's now clicked into life. This camera is such good fun. It's so quiet as well. The leaf shutter on it is so quiet. Um, it's just a great fun camera to use. Well, once you've sort of got your idea of your zone focused in and your lighting, just set up and point and shoot. It's brilliant. When I was actually taking the pictures, although I had some earphones in, um, I wasn't really sort of talking while I was vlogging. I was just showing you guys where I was at the train station. And um, so I couldn't really hear it, but at one point I took the earphones out and took a couple of pictures and I thought, that didn't sound right. And then I carried on and I thought, this really don't sound well, but I carried on doing the shoot anyway. Um, and then when I started to shoot in the shadow areas around 160th of a second, that's when I noticed um, I had a few problems. No matter what shutter speed or what aperture I set it at, it does the same thing. Intermittently. Real pain, really. But other than the issues that I've had today, this is actually <laughs> clinically a nice looking camera. It's quite mint condition. Um, these are fantastic cameras. I've got a couple of them. I've got another one here. This one works. I should have bloody took this one out with me. So it's quite simple to use. There's no light meter inside these cameras. So I'm not going to bring out my, my Sonic, my, my Sonic, <laughs> my, my Sonic light meter. I've bought out my phone and that's got a light meter app on it. It's called AP Light Meter. Works pretty well. It's just enjoyable, fun photography using old cameras. Cool. I wouldn't say it's the perfect beginner's camera for film photography. Um, unless you're unless you're you're quite comfortable with with photography and the apertures, the uh, film speeds and the shutter speeds as well, um, and also zone focusing, I didn't put a range finder on when I went out. I just used the zone focusing, which is uh, on the barrel of the lens there. So I was kind of looking at my distances and just judging the distances uh, using the zone focus and the hyperfocal focusing as well, and they came out okay. The only thing I don't know about this camera is this little button on the top. Maybe someone can let me know what this little button is. I've got. A little button at the top here, not this one, not the fire button. There's another little button there that you press down. I ain't got a clue what that's for. Um, maybe someone can let, let me know in the comments. 
Uh, 45mm lens, f3.5, and it goes all the way to f22, and the shutter speeds are on this from bold mode, one second, all the way to 500th of a second. So it's, these shutters are fantastic. It's a pro, not pronto, a, a Compure Rapid, I can never get these names, a Compure, a Compure Rapid shutter. To be honest with you, none of, these, none of these names mean much to me at all. I just look at what speeds I've got on the top, and um, but I've got a problem with this camera, and I've not got a clue what it is. And to be honest with you, these are so cheap online to buy, it's not worth getting it sent off for repair, I don't think. Do you guys think it's worth me getting this sent off for repair? How much is that gonna cost me for someone to take it all apart and then try and fix it? It's gotta be near, close on 100 quid, 100 pounds, surely. Um, when I can get one of these, mint condition for about 50 quid online, they're often coming up. Do you know what's gonna happen? <laughs> It'll be turning you into a little lamp, my friend. Take that little lens out, put a little light bulb in there and turn you on. Look, sausage, listen here, yeah? I'm 70 years old. I've had enough of all this film photography stuff. Now piss off, you got that? But of course I'm not going to turn it into a lamp. I'll probably get it repaired. And those that do turn them into lamps may them walk through a field of a thousand cows full of cow -ish. But they're fantastic cameras. On the back here you've got, they're quite a strange design. On the back you've got this little safety lever here and underneath that is the button that you press to flip open the back and put your film in. That's well covered so when you're shooting you're not going to pull the back open. Uh, nice little safety feature. Underneath the film advance you've got your little button there for rewinding the film. It worked again. And on the top here, you've got a little indicator as to what film you've got. It's quite cute because it gives you a few films. This gives you some idea of uh, how many films are around in them days. All the most popular ones seem to be on the top of this camera here. Don't forget, this is 1950s. And when you open the back and put your film in, it doesn't automatically reset the um, film, the uh, frame counter. You have to do that yourself. So you just start it if you've got a 36 film or a 24 film. You start it at 36 or 24 and it counts down until your final shot. And the other nice thing about this little camera is it's got a coupled uh, shutter speed and aperture as well. So for example, I'm on 5.6 at the moment at 60th of a second. If I want to change my exposure or my shutter speed to 125th, it automatically changes it to f4. If I want to go to f, uh, shutter speed of 130th, it automatically changes it to f8. So it's quite nice to have that little coupled moment if I want to uh, just change my shutter speed for whatever reason. And there's a little button there as well so you can separate the two. But these are just fantastic little cameras to run around with, especially if you're doing street photography. Um, as long as you can get your zone focusing right. You know, I've got a little tiny lens hood somewhere for it. I don't know where that's gone. But um, if you're running around doing street photos, it's not intimidating, it's not big. And if anything, people are probably quite inquisitive as to, you know, what the bloody hell is he shooting on? What's that? Um, in fact, those two little kids today, I tried to I tried to get them. I saw them again later on. I tried to get them to have a photograph on the bench. I said, let me take your photograph. He's going, go on, go on, go on. He's trying to egg his mate on, and they both bottled out. Mind you, the camera weren't working, so the chances are you wouldn't have got a photograph, kids, anyway. Which brings me back to the thought that I had. So, obviously, I've got a shutter problem it's not an aperture problem it's it's a leaf shutter so i don't know what's wrong with it but in, i mean inside you've got the aperture blades they're always open so if you're choosing f, f 5.6 it's always open at 5.6 f 22 it's always um, open at f 22 um, and in front of that is the leaf shutter that, that opens and closes depending on your shutter speed when you press the fire button so there's obviously nothing wrong with the aperture blades. It's something to do with the mechanism inside that keeps getting stuck. It might be a spring or something like that, but I'd love someone out there to let me know um, what they reckon the, the problem is. The chances of me opening this up uh, like a can of beans and trying to find out what's wrong, it ain't gonna happen because there's gonna be springs flying all over the place and uh, I'll probably tread on one. But like I've always said on my channel, you know, I went out for a nice walk, had a good walk around around that uh, train station, said hello to a couple of people along the way, and took some photographs. I think I got 12 shots out of this out of this 36 roll. The others were just where the shutter didn't open for me, so I got nothing at all. Um, but it's good to know that, you know, this is another camera there. I can just put a little sticker on the back of it and say, okay, it needs a little bit of TLC, something wrong with it. And the thing is, I've got similar models to these cameras and I've actually taken them out to shows and stuff. And that's the only camera that I've been out with. So you are taking a bit of a risk when you take these older cameras out, even if you've had them recently serviced or whatever. 
you know, they're old cameras, so it's a chance that it might fail. So you can't really get the ump over it or, or get disappointed and go, oh, you know, oh, none of my shots come out. Oh, pff, you took out a 1950s odd camera, you know. Anything important, I'll be taking one of my newer cameras out or one of the cameras that I know do work, uh, like the Nikon F6, the Leica, or the F5, um, the Olympus OM20, that works pretty well. Uh, you know, but it's like anything. Cameras are cameras, they're mechanical, they can go at any minute. It's no different to a DSLR mirror falling off or a mirrorless camera's computer's malfunctioning or even your SD card uh, nausing up on you during a shoot. It happens, that's why these modern um, uh, digital cameras have got two, two, uh, two SD card slots, you know, uh, one for a backup. But um, it is what it is. It's just a film, mechanical camera. It's an old one from the 1950s. I took a risk. I went out and had a little bit of fun with it. Took some photographs. And now at least I know that, you know, this one ain't working, ain't working too well. It might be on its way to, to retina heaven. Um, I don't know. Let's ask it. Well, come on. Let's hear it. What have you got to say for yourself? Piss off. But I was a bit fed up that it mugged me off. Do you know what I mean? My first video of 2023 and the camera wants to mug me up like a two bob. And for those interested, I developed that Kentmere 400 film um, that I pre-rolled onto that, onto that cassette. I developed that in Kodak D76, which was a stock solution. It's a replenished solution that I've been using now for about four or five weeks. And I just keep topping it up a little bit every time I shoot um, a roll of film. So it's well seasoned up by now. I want to see how long I keep going with that. It's starting to look a bit murky, but it's still working. So um, it's, it's saving me a fortune in developer. And the legs are coming out okay. So anyway, guys, let us know in the comments what you think is wrong with this camera, because I ain't got a clue unless I open it up. And even then, I still won't have a clue. Um, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys think. A little bit of a shame that I didn't get all the photographs that I took, but, you know, hey-ho, there again. You're shooting a 1950s camera. You take your chances, don't you? I hope everyone has a fantastic new year, um, or a fantastic year ahead of 2023. Keep shooting, guys. Let's keep our ears to the ground on what's happening with the film photography, especially what's happening with Pentax over there um, whatever they've got up their sleeves uh, I don't know depends what prices they're going to be coming out with these new cameras but this video is not about that I hope everyone has a fantastic 2023 prosperous healthy and uh, keep shooting some good photographs and less of the duffers let's hope so I'll catch you next time come on what have you got to say for yourself oh what do you look lovely so my little German friend oh for 